Coming to you from the Scarab Club, located in the Cultural Center of Detroit, Michigan, we'll take a look at the exhibition, Uncommon Threads, currently on display, Friday, July 10th to August 29th, 2020. Hi, I'm Jeremy Noonan. I'm a textile designer, artist, and head of Fiber and Textiles at College for Creative Studies. Welcome to the Scarab Club. The Scarab Club was founded in 1907 by a group of artists and art enthusiasts who enjoyed meeting regularly to discuss art and socialize. This historic arts and crafts style clubhouse was built in 1928 and continues to engage the community under the same mission, to cultivate and celebrate the visual, literary, and performing arts in Detroit. Last February, the director of exhibitions, Trina Flannery, contacted me and asked me if I'd like to be a juror for this exhibition, Uncommon Threads. I said, absolutely. The original date for this exhibition was scheduled for March to April. Due to COVID, this exhibition was postponed and rescheduled. The call for entry went out the middle of February and the deadline was the first week of March. The artists submitted photographs of their work, a descriptive, descriptive uh, information, and a brief statement online. I made my final selections for this exhibition on March 12th. My goal was to select a diverse range of contemporary fiber works. I evaluated each entry based on vision of concept, technical craft, and design excellence. Every entry offered a unique and beautiful perspective. There were a total of 134 entries, and my task was to uh, reduce down the entries to accommodate the size of the gallery space. In this exhibition, there are a total of 41 artworks. Welcome to Uncommon Threads at the Scarab Club. I'd like to start by uh, kind of going through each piece giving a, a brief kind of introduction of the things that I kind of spoke to me about how I selected those pieces and um, identify a little bit about those, those attributes. I'd like to first introduce this piece by Jill Paul. It's called Arboreal Bones and Salmon Spirits. It's a digital print that looks quilted um, and fragmented, meaning multiple pieces are assembled together to produce the image I was really drawn to the idea that we're looking at a depiction of nature, but then it's almost like looking through uh, the lens of something that kind of breaks up that scene. It also has applique elements of salmon fish at the bottom. This is the work of Rachel Esquivez called The Thinker. I was really drawn to this work for its use of um, remnant pieces of lace that are covering this uh, human head. I like the concept that potentially one could drown their senses in extravagance. This piece by Meredith Morrison called Material Matter is an assemblage of elements that almost look like jewelry that hold what appears to be hair. Um, I was really drawn to its feather-like quality, but also its very scientific approach to presenting these materials. I'm also really interested in this beaded uh, sculpture that is sitting next to this piece. This piece by Rebecca Smith, Abstracted Architecture. It is a weaving that has uh, inlaid elements uh, throughout it. It almost appears like an abstract painting with different woven structures. And it also has small little elements that are reflective. When I first saw this piece by Ardell, Mankanen um, called Every, Everyone Loves a Log. I really thought it referenced almost like a face um, that with graffiti on it or a graffiti interpretation of a face. But I also thought it looked like an egg that would represent like a new egg that's clean and um, like a clean white canvas. I thought it looked like a, an egg that is almost like a rebirth of an old soul. This piece by Deborah Brown Cage called Blossom of Flowers, it appears very botanical, but at the same time has very abstracted elements. 
I was really attracted to the, the very uh, approach to couching, which has a concentric um, kind of layering to it. And then it's um, needle felted to this kind of base material. I like the relief of it. And I'm very interested in the color interaction between um, all the colors that are used in the artwork. This is a piece by Janet Hamrick called Heat Wave. And it is hot in Detroit right now. So this piece is very much on point. Um, I'm really attracted to the almost blown up scale of these woven structures and also the chunky yarn quality that's in this weaving. There's also some different elements of inlays where the color starts to shift and change so we can kind of see in the kind of base material where she inlays yellow into the, into the ground and then also some other elements of red that kind of go throughout. This is the work of Oisali Biswas. She's the first place winner of this exhibition. The work is called Kolkata Chronicles. I'm really drawn to this uh, composition for multiple reasons. One, I really am excited about this use of custom dyed materials that she's created. Then she's gone back into that to um, applique them together to produce one ground. On top of that ground, you can see a variety of elements. You can see woven structures. You can see inlays of copper. You can see double weaves that are happening on the surface. And you can also kind of see these figures that almost appear like they're sitting within some sort of building or architectural space. This work by Monica Prince called Hope, when I first saw the image, it reminds me of something that would come out of the futurist movement. Um, it has this kind of bold uh, energy to it, multi-layers. Um, this, this work itself is constructed with um, free motion embroidery. We can see elements of hair um, with these eyelash yarns through it, some metallic threads. But overall, I think it has an energy that's both hopeful and it also has a little violence to it too. I'd first like to talk about Carol Williams' piece, How Did This Happen? I think this pretty much feels like what everyone's questioning. What is going on? Um, I'm really drawn to not only this use of the American flag and the sheep that make up the question mark in the central um, plane, but I'm also drawn to these elements on the outside of it that start to radiate out into other, uh, maybe other works within the gallery. I think it's trying to communicate something, and I hope somebody's listening. The other work I'd like to talk about is from Sarah Barrett Neal. It's called Boro Black Market. This uses scrap fabrics um, with this borrow technique and also has an assemblage of collage with paper. I was really drawn to this piece because one, it feels spiritual, but it also feels like everything's kind of connected with one kind of um, unified um, action, whether it's the layering or the stitching. This is a work by Heather McCauley called Pop Lolly. It's jacquard woven. I'm really drawn to this piece for its pop art presence. It kind of feels a little like, um, and this is from my personal experience, as a Gen Xer uh, going to raves in the 90s. It has a little bit of that vibe, which I'm really attracted to. I think it speaks to Detroit. This work by Mindy Mitchell is a shibori, meaning the work is actually woven as one continuous cloth of white with little elements of thread going through that when you weave it all up, you can actually tie off and resist the, the fabric before it's dyed. Once it's dyed, those threads are removed and you get this really organic texture and pattern throughout the, the composition. This piece by Kristen Lund called Untitled, Pink Mirrors, spoke to me for its kind of spiritual presence. It has reflective mirrors um, right within the middle of each um, medallion. Uh, so you can kind of see yourself in that space. It almost appears like this could be your eyes, and then maybe this is your third eye, kind of keeping you or leading you to a higher plane. Right below it, we have the work of Dolores Slawinski called Carnival. I was really drawn to its kind of surreal-like painting style, but executed with a variety of stitches and couching, actually these are running stitches, 
that make up this composition. This is the work of Anna Gokorowski called Dune Finding a Place in Between. I was really attracted to the painter, almost impressionist painting-like style of this tapestry, where in the composition, most likely she had an original cartoon placed behind the artwork when she's weaving it, and then she's deciding which colors will optically blend together to produce this fade and gradient throughout it. I like the figures that are here. It almost appears that they're looking at this home in the background, or the potential of a new space to live. This piece by Sam Dykes called Bottlescape reminds me of a Baroque still life where a variety of objects are laid out within a composition and then painted to a very realistic kind of execution. However, in this tapestry weaving, we can see the, the motifs and um, objects are cartooned with this outline of black and then the the variety of color and texture. I'm really drawn to the color usage um, and some of the, the uh, accents that are using metallic threads or really furry uh, surfaces. This is the work of Feather Chavarini, second place winner of this exhibition. I was really drawn to the, the um, assemblage of different uh, materials and techniques. You can kind of see this treetopper-like shape with the central figure of what I found to be Dolly Parton and Bob Hope in an embrace, done in a batik wax resist. We can also see to the top left a donut hole open with an extension, extended arm and a glove. I kind of question this idea of what the glove represents and its meaning to a uh, physical and emotional connection. This work by Patricia Beard called A Woman of Color. I was really drawn to the multimedia approach to this collage. It uses both fabric and paper. Um, in, this, in this figure, you know, she's kind of represented almost like a, a, a dream or a cartoon of sorts. She's also kind of on the background of this geological formation that is probably carved by years and years of water and erosion. I like the gesture of her head, she's looking up, but she also has her eyes closed. So I kind of feel like she might be hopeful or she might be in a state of dreaming. This is the work of Sherry Erkstein. It's, a trip, it's one piece of a triptych. And it's called Honor Bright Wrapped in Instinct, Instinct Triptych. It really reminded me of well, a cocoon that's in the, in the in way of metamorphosis. Um, but it also reminds me of maybe like a bat or some sort of creature that's sleeping at night. I really like the, the cocooning quality. I like that it's printed true scale. It has a great impact. Um, and overall, I think it's a beautiful a way to represent uh, textiles through photography. This work by Catherine Amity is called Flashing Red Light Somewhere Between Here and Chicago. This is a jacquard weaving. Um, that utilizes a variety of colors in the construction of it. It has an ominous quality about it, um, as if you're obstructed, your vision is obstructed through driving, or um, it looks almost like a memory. This is a piece by Jan Moskowitz called Autumn Leaves 4. I'm really drawn to the bold graphics and color uh, usage in this uh, composition. You can kind of see the construction is both kind of really structured and organized, but there's a bit of improvisation with the way the graphics are kind of laid out and constructed. I also like the top stitching that kind of creates these vertical lines throughout the piece. This piece by Took Gallagher called Rattlehead, I was really drawn to its both playful um, kind of presence with this spotted uh, em embellishment that goes across the backbone of the snake. I like how it's um, both playful and sinister. Um, we see it right now in the gallery as a sculptural object, but I kind of really drawn to the idea that this is a piece that you might want to play with. Um, you might want to wear it. The work of Steph Stephanie Latham. She is an honor uh, honorable mention in this exhibition. This piece called Cloth of a Memory Object was produced through a casting technique where she would weave the um, article and then cast it in bronze. And through that process, the original um, 
material is burnt up and disintegrated. What's left behind is a memorial of the original cloth. This is the work of Dorothy Jett Carter, third place winner of this exhibition. The title of this work is called Walk With Me. In the composition, you can see two figures, both of them wearing mud cloth. Mud cloth is connected to traditional textile techniques of West Africa, where the maker will utilize uh, clay with high oxide to produce a dye that marks the cloth. Sometimes that cloth is used as camouflage, other times it marks um, your rank, and then sometimes it's utilized in celebrations like uh, rites of passage. I'm really drawn to the highly embellished surface that this, these figures are within. We can see a lot of couching, embroidery, beading, embellishment. And then I'm really excited about how she's handled and dealt with the edge of the cloth, as if it was removed from a much larger cloth uh, of someone's life. This is a piece by Ruth uh, Warnow called Self-Portrait, Pleiades Rising. Um, I believe Pleiades is uh, a reference to a uh, constellation, I think of, uh, and also called like the Seven Sisters. So we kind of see seven orbs um, up the wall. Uh, each, one, each one of its orbs is really kind of this bundle of, of matter. We can see feathers, um, wood, um, shells, burlap, fabric. I really like that it's all growing from one central stem as if it's almost like a pea pod. This is a piece by Deborah Barker called The Modern Sampler. I was really drawn to the composition. It reminds me so much of, um, you know, table linens. It has almost a hem stitch implied through its kind of uh, exterior. But all of the motifs um, that make this, this image up are utilizing a variety of symbols, ideograms, um, emoji-like motifs, all adding up to some sort of cryptic language that I'm really not certain as to what it's saying. I do feel like this almost represents the psyche of navigating today's world with social media, multi-messaging. Um, I think it's a really great representation. I'd also like to talk about the work of Margie Benson, Woven Tree. This looks like a tapestry that was executed um, with a, a sort of a plan, but very improvisational. We can kind of see in the background of this woven structure, we have a variety of, of fibers, elements, sheen, but in the construction of it, you can almost see this portal or doorway that one might enter into this world. I really love the idea of what that world on the other side of that door might look like. This is the work of Jack pa Jerome Patriot called Black Red Inru Staff. I respond to this work because it, it almost reminds me of early weave drafts that you might see from Annie Elbers. This work is also from Jerome Patriot. I'm really drawn to uh, the, the hand coloring of that one layer of paper intermixed with the interlacing of the black uh, mulberry. Due to shipping delays, I've spliced this image in. This is the work of Pezia Manella. The title of this piece is called Rot. It's a hand-woven jacquard of an image of an architectural gate. The perspective of the subject matter seems to overpower the viewer. The location of this piece is adjacent to the gates leading out to the Scarab Club courtyard, a perfect location. This is the work of Kayla Powers, an honorable mention for this exhibition. This is a piece called Local Color. What we see here is something that looks like a sample, a color sampler that you might find um, at your local hardware store or paint store. It's produced by forging plant matter from the local Detroit city, um, boiling that down into a dye, and then dyeing the material with that color. What this represents is essentially colors that are available in your local community. This is the work of Heroku Lancor called Faded Memories Tribute to People with Alzheimer's. I was really drawn to the, the grid structure, which is done with exact precision. I like the architectural references of this grid that are dimensional, 
But at the same time, with any sort of give, much like the air conditioning on the piece now, all of that stuff is pliable and moves. So there's really no solid structure to this work. This is the work of Elise Martin called Sleeping Sibling. In this quilt, we can kind of see three figures kind of resting on one another. All of the faces are almost erased, like a memory, or maybe even a dreamscape. I'm really attracted to these kind of drawn out grids using almost like cyanotype or bleach, in addition to a lot of these quilt techniques and overlays of the artwork. This is the work of Amelia Rennell called Hanging On. I'm really attracted to this idea of this growth and weight. It's almost like it's an upside down family tree. You can kind of see uh, the pole, which is really supporting the entire system, the organism that seems to be growing. I'm really drawn to its use of a lot of domestic materials. We can kind of see almost a mattress ticking alongside a very provincial floral in this artwork. This is a work by Nancy McRae called Human Chain. You can kind of see this is a woven uh, cloth where she inlays uh, different colors of yarn to produce the image. You can kind of see figures all lined up walking into what appears to be a lake or ocean. This type of gesture is usually used when you're trying to find somebody that's lost in the undercurrents of being in water. This is the work of Kaylee Cagechuck called Time. I'm really drawn to this tufted looped surface in conjunction with the motifs that she's used. We can kind of see what appears to be a wrist watch leisurely waiting in the water of a river or lake. I like this idea that it speaks to surrealism but also it makes me question, you know, what is leisure and how do we use our time most effectively? This is the work of Sam Dines, honorable mention of this exhibition. Her work called Moving On, I was drawn to the, both the color language of the piece, it really does look like a party, and um, I'm also drawn to how much it looks like a still life painting. You can kind of see different elements in here that might appear to be candy. Maybe somebody is making some food for a party. And then they might have some drinks over here to really kind of celebrate some sort of occasion. You can also kind of see a lot of texture and variation of color and sheen within the materials that she uses. This is the work of Lisa Hermesmeyer. Honorable mention in this exhibition. This piece called Dream Bands is constructed of six tablet woven bands creating this composition. I was really drawn to the way that the graphic of these weavings produce a tension. I'm also really excited about the installation of the work and how these bands are hung. It almost appears like there's a bird about to take flight. Thank you for visiting me at the Scare Club to view this virtual talk. I encourage you to visit the Scarab Club exhibition, Uncommon Threads, in person, and to check out the Scarab Club online at scarabclub.org for future exhibitions and events. You can also find them on Instagram at Scarab Club Detroit. Thank you for visiting.